Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. We have another repair video today. I was unpacking some stuff just yesterday and found this little West German made barometer. It has some issues and I don't want to throw it out. So let's see if we can fix it and get it up to a stage where we can sell it. So here's the barometer, which is a, a gauge for measuring the atmospheric pressure uh, and it's used in forecasting. So they're quite a popular item, uh, both for um, home decor but also practical use uh, having grown up on the farm we always had one hanging outside the back door and it does give you a bit of a guide as to when the weather's about to change of course it's not so important these days because um, forecasting is so easy to access but back in the earlier days you really had to look at the clouds and guess sometimes so these gave you a bit of a an idea so it's marked from stormy right round rain change fair and very dry Generally, a higher atmospheric pressure relates to dry, hot weather and lower atmospheric pressure relates to rain or stormy conditions. So this one's quite a tiny one. It's made in Western Germany, uh, which dates it between about 1950 and I think 19, about 1990, uh, Germany was unified again. So we know it's in that period from the West German mark. And also you'll notice all the screws, are the straight slot ones, there's no Phillips head screws. It's actually a metal back on it. Um, it looks like Bakelite, but I think it's probably just hard plastic, and I'll give you a bit of an idea on how to pick that shortly. So I would say this one probably dates to the 19, late 1950s, maybe into the 60s. Brass screws, tin back. Uh, so it's a vintage one. It's uh, going to be a nice little unit if we can get it to work. The issues, well, it's clearly been dropped off the wall. I think you can see there the casing's badly cracked. It's got a few cracks rating AD out from that impact mark and a couple of chips as well. So that's quite loose and it means the glass is loose because it's not clamping in there properly. Glass is very dirty and also I noticed that the needle is very loose, that adjusting needle or the indicator needle and I'll show you how that works later for those that don't know about barometers and it also fouls against the actual uh, instrument needle so they hit. So it needs a little bit of work is it worth repairing probably not but what would you do i'm i can't really sell it like this and i don't want to throw it out so i reckon we can have a go at fixing it so the first thing we're going to do is obviously dismantle it uh, we have screws around the outside there's three of them these ones will hold the mechanism inside the casing to the back plate and that one there is an adjuster so we won't touch those ones for now we'll just pull the plastic casing off and we'll have a good look at what we're going to do to repair that. Uh, it's probably going to need gluing and perhaps a bit of... I think I'll end up repainting it uh, if we can't get it neat without with just gluing. So we'll take these brass screws out. And now that we've got those out, it'll come apart very easily. So the case is going to come off. Let's have a look at that. It certainly had a decent crash. But I think we should be able to perhaps use some JB Weld. And we should have plenty of room inside to actually um, join that crack up. Uh, it looks like it hasn't affected where it mounts onto the, where the screw mounts the back panel on. So we'll address that crack shortly. Oh, I was going to mention about Bakelite. It certainly looks like Bakelite. But the easiest way to tell is to give them a rub with your finger. And rub them until you actually feel a bit of heat generated. And once you feel it's getting a bit hot, stick it straight under your nose and have a smell. And if it's Bakelite, you will get a very noticeable sort of a burnt rubber smell. And once you've smelled it, you'll never forget it. Um, whereas this one actually just has a faint chemical smell. So it's just a hard plastic. Um, and that's probably, yeah, probably typical of the era into the 50s and 60s. There wasn't very much Bakelite around. It was mainly uh, into various forms of plastic. And that's all this one is. But that's fine. We should be able to fix that. Now, back to the instrument. The glass isn't damaged, which is great. But it's extremely dirty, so we'll clean that up. Now, this indicator is very loose. And I think it's a bit bent. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't slop around like that so we might try and tighten that up looks like it's just got a bit of a rivet there so we'll have to try and just squash that up a little bit without hopefully cracking the glass the 
dial face looks pretty good and it looks like it just sits between those posts so that's in pretty good condition it looks like it's an aluminium back so we won't have any troubles there and the mechanism looks nice and clean there's no rust or anything which is good uh, we'll have to make sure this needle is straight enough so it doesn't snag on the other one and also we're going to need to calibrate it because as it was it was pointing it very dry and it's not um you know we're into spring here and we've had some stormy weather so i'm sure the pressure the atmospheric pressure is reading incorrectly we'll have a look at how to calibrate this later on when we've got it ready to go together now just having a look at the actual mechanism itself just to see how it works you'll see that it's got a large disc here which is i'm not exactly sure how it operates i think it's like a bellows and any slight change in air pressure causes that disc to flex a bit and when that disc flexes through a little series of pulleys and springs you can see if i push on the screwdriver there it actually moves the needle so it doesn't need very much movement at all to actuate the needle and that operates through a little arm here and you can see that i can make the needle move just by touching that so microscopic movement on this disc due to air pressure is amplified through the needle to point at a certain part of the gauge so at this stage we're going to say the instrument here is okay there appears to be no issues with it other than it needs calibrating which is great so the bulk of this barometer is perfectly fine the dial was perfectly fine which is great it doesn't even need a clean so we'll look at cleaning the glass and fixing up the indicator and the first job we're going to do is try and glue up this casing okay if you haven't used jb weld before i would highly recommend it it's very good stuff very strong uh, it's a two-part epoxy uh, this one here is called the steel uh, which is the, i guess the main compound and then we have the hardener you squeeze equal amounts of each tube uh, and depending how much you need and in this case we're not going to need a whole lot i'm just using some scrap paper here i think that should be plenty given that we've only got one crack to glue together but we're going to pack it up a little bit behind it just to give it a bit of extra strength and also the good thing about jb weld is that once it's fully cured in about 24 hours you can actually sand it so we can probably get away without using any filler to fill up these little chips in the housing uh, it's good for metal wood here's the here's the uh, packet metal wood plastic tiles pvc ceramic fiberglass concrete and more the only thing you really can't use it on is flexible things like rubber or materials uh, so now we just want to mix it together and you're mixing white and black to make a nice even gray so it's very clear when you've got it mixed uh, i'm not sure how long it's workable for but i think you've got a fair bit of time uh, clean up i think with acetone if you need to but i'm just going to try and smear it over fairly neatly so we only have a little bit to sand off and we shouldn't have any much anything really to clean up other than sanding there we go you can see that's a nice even gray and i've cleaned up the plastic so that there's no dust or foreign materials there and we should be able to flex this apart a bit how are we going to do this perhaps this angle and for a start i'll just get a bit in to the gap it's very sticky stuff so the good thing is that it kind of stays where you need where you put it without running off and i'll smooth that out a bit more in a minute but they say you should rough up the surfaces but because this is a crack through the plastic it's going to be fairly rough and it should fit very snugly you can already see there that the jb weld has forced its way through just from the plastic springing back together so we'll just put a little bit more down the bottom here and i will put a little bit thicker on the inside because that'll just reinforce the join okay so we've got to get that plastic lined up hopefully i'm still in shot here 
So I'll flex the plastic so that it's actually lined up exactly where it came from. And now I'm going to take some of the bulk off the outside here so we don't have too much to sand back. But I will smear it round where those chips were and the, there was a radial crack around this side and we'll be able to sand that smooth afterwards. Uh, because it stays dark grey when it sets we're going to have to paint this but I was planning to do that anyway. Yeah, I think that's filled all the spots pretty neatly. So next step now, I'm going to put a large cable tie around this to hold it together to keep a bit of pressure on the join. So I've got a nice wide cable tie on there. We'll tension that up a little bit. And that will hold the plastic in shape. You can see it's squeezed a little bit more JB weld through there. We'll just smooth that out a little bit. That should be pretty good. And on the outside, well, of course, it's going to glue the. It's actually going to glue the cable tie around there, but we should be able to peel that off okay, and then we can just clean it up with a bit of fine sandpaper. So I'll leave that set till tomorrow, 24 hours to cure properly, and then we can take the cable tie off and clean it up. Now, for the delicate part of the operation, I'm going to try and tighten this little needle up, and I've got a little socket here which gives me a hollow point and I want to try and press the brass just down onto the copper rivet or the copper uh, shank a little bit a little bit just to tighten it up against the glass but I'm going to tap it with a hammer but I certainly don't want to break the glass so very gentle remember the pressures is going through the stem and not through the glass however if it's too tight we're going to break the glass. Oh, what did that do? That firmed it up quite a bit actually. Still a little loose, but this has to move fairly freely. And now we might be able to peen that little copper bit over just to firm it up a little bit more. But I think that worked okay. Now I've got a center punch. Well, it's actually a normal punch being ground down by someone. And I'm gonna put a dot right in the middle and what I hope to do is just flare the copper shank, shank out a little bit just to tighten things up. Okay, I think we've had success there. It's now firm to move around. It moves quite okay, but it doesn't wobble all over the place. Okay, that's good. We still have to just get rid of the bit of the curl out of the needle so that it's sitting snug against the glass and we need to clean the glass up. I think to bend the needle down if we just prop it up near the hub there and then we can put a bit of downwards pressure to kink it and I think it's pretty good. Now lately I've had a thing for this Meguiar's Plastex. I've used it on uh, an acrylic uh, turntable top and it does a great job. It's actually marketed for cleaning headlights. It is actually a plastic polish, uh, but I find it's really good for a glass cleaner because it won't scratch the glass and it actually polishes the grime off pretty well. Um, I don't think you can polish scratches out of glass with it. It's not that abrasive, but you can certainly use it as a glass cleaner and I've used it on clock dials and it's come up really... It gives them a really nice clarity and quite makes the glass really smooth. So let's just use this and give the glass style a bit of a polish. And voila, how does that look? It certainly brings it up glossy, beautiful. And I gave the brass knob a little bit of a polish. I didn't have any brasso here, but I just used Silvo, which is much the same polish. So um, there we go, magnificent. It's gonna look the bee's knees when it's all painted up and back together. It's the next day and I thought I'd come out to the shed and just see how this has gone. The JB Weld has set. It hasn't fully cured because we haven't been 24 hours and it still feels a little bit rubbery. But as far as the gluing job done is done, I think that should be fine. 
I've been thinking overnight that I really should have probably smeared a little bit of grease or something on the inside of this cable tie just to stop it sticking. I'm not exactly sure how well this glue is going to hold on to it. So let's have a look and see how easy it is to get off. We'll just snip through the tie. And it's attached as expected. And, oh, there we go. Yeah, because of the ridges on it, it actually didn't really get in. There was only a couple of really small contact points. So that's fine. I was actually envisaging overnight that I'd have to carve this away with a, a blade to get back to the plastic. But that's fine. Um, it didn't contact very much at all. But in the future, I think it'd be safe just to smear a light smear of grease just to prevent it sticking at all. Okay, I'm going to leave that another day before I sand it so that it goes nice and hard. Uh, as I said, it's a little bit rubbery and I think it'd be hard to sand at the moment. Certainly feels like it's securely attached. That's great. So it's been long enough now. The JB Weld is set nice and hard. It doesn't feel very rubbery or anything, so we should be able to sand it. I've got my Dremel out with a very fine just sanding drum and it's around about the right profile. So we'll just carefully take the bulk of it off and then we'll finish it by hand with some wet and dry paper. Okay, now I'm going to finish this job off just with some wet and dry paper. I've got a fairly fine grit so that I get a nice smooth finish and hopefully the JB Weld blends with the plastic nicely and we don't have any little marks. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of water on it uh, just to stop any dust flooding around. Okay, so I've sanded that. It hasn't taken long, actually. I'm, I'm quite pleased with how well this JB Weld sands. And by using the really fine paper, we haven't taken too much material off the plastic. We've just basically filled in all the, uh, the little dints and chips. And it's probably left a little bit higher there, but I've got exactly the same profile. Um, so I doubt you will actually notice once it's been painted. So I'm pretty happy with that repair. And inside we've still got a bit of thickness to give it some strength. So I'll let that dry off. I'll give it a bit of a wash, let it dry off, and we'll have to spray paint it tomorrow. We'll probably put it out. I think it's supposed to be a nice day. Give it a quick spray outside and see how it looks. I think we'll go a matte black and then maybe a coat of clear just to give it a bit of a little bit of a gloss. I don't want it shiny, glossy black, but um, it probably wasn't meant to be matte. This probably should have been polished up. So we'll go a couple of coats of matte and then a coat of gloss and see how it looks. Okay guys, it's a few days later. I've finished painting up this uh, housing and it's come up really well. I did give it a couple of coats of matte and then a light coat of, of gloss lacquer. And you can see that it's it's shiny, it's a little glossy, but it's not super shiny. And if you can see the reflection there, it, it's almost a little bit cloudy, just like Bakelite would look. So I'm actually pretty happy with that finish. And if I rotate it around, you'll probably be able to see the join because... It wasn't the best sanding job. I probably would have been better just using a bit of filler that was easier to sand. Hang on, have we found it yet? Can't be too bad if we can't find it. Where is it, actually? I did so. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's a little bit uneven around this side. You can see with the reflection. But when we do it this way, yeah, there's a couple little marks there. But it's solid, it's strong. I didn't worry about painting inside. And people are pretty much not going to ever pick it it's one of those things like when you paint your house, you notice all the bits that you didn't quite do properly, but no one else ever sees them. So, yeah, I think it's pretty good. It'll make for a nice repair. So we can assemble it now, and all we have to do is just calibrate the, the actual barometer needle, and we're right to go. And all we have to be careful with on assembly is make sure the needles don't either rub or fail on each other. Now that plate just sort of sits in there on those posts and our glass sits on top and we just have to make sure that they clear each other. I think we're going to have to bend this black one down a little bit. Close to the hub we should be able to bend it a bit. And it's rubbing now. We have to lift it a fraction at the end. Okay, I think that's all right. 
and we can fit the glass and yeah the indicator seems to miss the black needle so that's good now we just have to put the casing on and screw it in from behind so that's back together how good's that looking now fantastic we just better make sure that the needles don't or oh, they do hit we'll have to adjust that okay everything's good with our needles now we just need to calibrate the barometer to work for where we are now now the atmospheric pressure is going to vary depending where you are how high you are above sea level and the prevailing weather conditions i just looked up on our weather bureau site for victoria central victoria where i am and the current uh, atmospheric pressure is 1013 hectopascals now you have to google how it um, relates to other things this particular barometer goes 28 29 30 31 and that's in the old school measurement of air pressure which was inches of mercury uh, and a quick google um, conversion brings us up to 29.93 uh, inches of mercury is the same as 1013 hectopascals so we just need to bring this needle up here and that was that adjusting screw on the back and we should be able to adjust there we go that's the right way to go we'll go 29.1 or thereabouts and we'll just give it a tap and that's the old thing about barometers you give them a bit of a tap and it just lets the needle move to where it reads accurately we'll turn that back up a little bit now it's jumped again okay so that's around about uh, an accurate representation of the air pressure where I am here and the way you use a barometer is just simply to put the indicator over the actual needle and then in a few hours or the next morning you can give this a little bit of a tap and see if the needle moves up and down if uh, you've got stormy weather coming the needle will gravitate down this way uh, and it gives you an idea of how the air pressure is so a successful restoration of a little west german barometer we better go and put it in the shop so there you go guys all finished a little repair job i would probably put about 30 35 dollars on this in the shop as a functional vintage west german barometer uh, i'm glad i didn't throw it out i'm glad we can give it another life and you know it's not probably economical but i get a lot of satisfaction out of it and someone will enjoy this barometer for a long time to come so thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next video bye for now